25 years ago, NEC's TurboGrafx-16 made its debut in America, going head-to-head -head against Nintendo's dated but dominant NES and the shiny but new Sega Genesis. Though not quite as powerful a machine as the Genesis, it wasn't really 16-bit despite the name, the TurboGrafx-16 still made quite an impression on many gamers. Sadly, NEC and Turbo Technologies didn't give the TG-16 nearly as much support in the US as it deserved, certainly not as much as it enjoyed in Japan, and as a result, the system never quite took off here. Still, despite its unfairly brief life and frustratingly anemic library, there are some real gems for fans to look out for. Whether you're building a collection or simply browsing for something fun on Virtual Console, be sure not to miss these classics. And by the way, we're just looking at US releases for the original TurboGrafx-16 with this list. No imports, no CD games. Those are picks for another time. Airzonk The TurboGrafx-16 was known for its shooters and it was known for the Bonk series. Airzonk smashes both concepts into a single delightful game. Set far in the future, Airzonk stars Bonk's great 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 etc grandson, as well as some totally sweet graphics and excellent gameplay. Bomberman 93 While Bomberman fans generally swear by Saturn Bomberman, Bomberman 93 is no slouch combining both the classic multiplayer action the world loves and the single-player story mode everyone always forgets about, Bomberman 93 doesn't do anything radically new or different with its explosive maze scramble bombing missions, it just does it all well. Plus, it supported 5 players at a time, making it 25% more awesome than 4-player chapters of the series that had come before. Bonk's Revenge As often happens with video game franchises, the middle entry in the TG-16 Bonk trilogy hit the ideal sweet spot between the rough but inventive original and the polished but predictable third chapter. Players control a macrocephalic caveman headbutting his way through prehistory, and Bonk's Revenge sees him putting this rock-hard head to work against a panoply of goofy and amusing dino monsters. Good times. Galaga 90 Once upon a time, in the arcades, this was called Galaga 88 but since the home port came out two years later, Namco decided to rename it to seem less dated. Whatever. It's a great shooter, whatever name you give it. Expanding on the time-honored Galaga style with more exciting enemy formations, more thrilling, challenging stages, new secrets, new mechanics, and more colorful graphics. Perhaps it lacks the perfect simplicity of the original Galaga, but it's still rad. Military Madness also known by the name Nectaris, Military Madness holds a fairly unique place in the annals of TurboGrafx's history. It's one of the few strategy games ever made for the system. And we're not talking about the usual Fire Emblem or Final Fantasy Tactics fluff here. It's an old-school, hex-based PC-style game of resource management and expansion. Also, it's nasty hard, just the way strategy fans like it. Newtopia Nintendo systems may be the only ones that ever get Zelda games, but Newtopia is about as close as you can get to a Zelda adventure without actual copyright infringement. A sprawling action RPG based around dungeons packed with puzzles and monsters, it's a fine if not particularly original take on the genre. Best of all, there's a great sequel that you can jump into immediately once the credits roll. New Adventure Island by the time this game rolled around, both Adventure Island and its suspiciously similar sister series Wonder Boy had shifted to a more exploratory, RPG-inspired, yes, Metroidvania format. Not New Adventure Island, though. It took its design cues from the original Adventure Island and offered a straight-up linear action platformer experience focusing on skill and reflex. A bit regressive, maybe, but a perfect match for the system's arcade spirit. Ordine Ordine may remind you of other games in the style, that is, the cute em up hardcore shooter with deceptively adorable graphics, but it manages to carve its own niche. It's a fixed scrolling horizontal shooter like Konami's Paradius, yet it incorporates elements from Sega's Fantasy Zone, like shops. Anyway, the important thing is that it looks great and plays well, and that absolutely is the case of this excellent arcade conversion. Paris All Stars Admittedly, Paris All-Stars may lack the inexplicably addictive quality of its predecessor Bubble Bobble, but it's a close second with fast-paced two-player action and a maddening earworm of a musical theme. Plus, it marked the publishing debut of Working Designs, who would go on to become a favorite for Turbo Duo and Sega CD fanatics. Soldier Blade the TurboGrafx-16 played home to a ridiculous number of vertical shooters with awesome graphics, similar power-up mechanics, and crazy hard action. Of them all, though, we have to give the nod to Soldier Blade, perhaps the ultimate evolution of the Star Soldier series. Great shooting, great visuals, great music. Yeah, it's pretty much just great. And finally, Splatterhouse. Namco's grim but addictive arcade brawler found a faithful conversion on TurboGrafx. Fundamentally a fairly simple game at heart, Splatterhouse's intense style made it quite memorable, and back in the days when the games industry was dominated by Nintendo's gentle, family-friendly approach, 
this bloody beat-em-up made NEC's console stand apart. For US Gamer, I'm Jeremy Parrish, and you are cool for reading US Gamer. <laughs>